Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are listening from. And welcome to yet another episode, episode 5, I believe, of the Incoming Podcast. Uh, Today, we will be tying up the bits and pieces we've looked at all through the previous episodes into one neat piece. Well, hopefully it will be neat anyway, fingers crossed. Uh, but having covered bits and pieces of it, we now want to examine what exactly is the gospel. What is the gospel? And there's a reason why this episode is a, a, the title is the message, and that's because. there is in our in our culture today shall we say there is this degree of that i mean yes i get the clamor for unity it's one i completely understand identify with and support but what i do not identify with or support is unity based on falsehood unity based on lies you know, even the book of Proverbs says a lying tongue is for a moment, but the truth will be established forever. So there is this lie that look, you know, the fundamental message of all religions is love, peace, and faith, and they are essentially the same. As a matter of fact, I heard some I heard somebody say once that it doesn't matter. That what doesn't that the messenger doesn't matter. What, what matters is did you get the message? And that's just the most stupid thing on the planet. Why? Because our message is not love, is not peace, is not faith, essentially. It's Christ. Jesus is our message. So everything you know we stand for as christians revolves around christ everything the bible advocates all the virtues it tries to extol it revolves around christ it says husband love your wives as christ loved the church is it forgiving one another even as god in christ forgave you paul was talking about his journeys in the book of romans i'll go to romans 15 to read it out for you because i don't think i could put it more eloquently than he did romans 15 and he says um I seem to have lost it. I'm, I'm sure it's Romans 15. Once, yeah, here we go. So Romans 15, verse 19. It says, In mighty signs and wonders, Paul was talking about his ministry, and by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about to Illyricum, or Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. So what was Paul preaching? Christ. (laughs) He wasn't preaching love. He wasn't preaching peace. He was preaching Christ. Even when the Bible talks about peace, it's peace with God through Christ. Because even the Antichrist, in the book of Revelation, he advocates peace for about three and a half years. So if your religion is advocating peace, if all uh, if all anybody's religion is advocating is peace how does it differ from from you know a, a, a concept so tenuous as peace cannot be the foundation of any religion because all men love peace so what's the distinguishing factor Paul in the book of Colossians I believe it's Colossians 1 gives us another pointer to his message 
Colossians 1. I will get to it in a second. Here we go. Colossians 1 verse 27. To them, 27 and 28, to them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Verse 28, him we preach. Not it, not they, not them, not themselves, not he, her, not her. Him we preach. Christ we preach. Warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. That we may preserve present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Him we preach. So the message of Christianity is in the name Christ Christianity. Christ Christianity. Christ is the message. And why is he the message? By virtue of the heavy lifting, lifting he did. In the book of Revelation, I um, mean, in the in his death and resu- resurrection. So, what is the gospel? Romans one, which we looked at in the last episode. Romans one, one to four. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son. You see the centrality, his son, his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. His son, but our Lord. His son, but our Lord. So it's a gospel, it's a message that recognizes Jesus, not as a teacher, not as a sage, not as a fantastic guy, as the son of God. And who is he to us? Not a mentor, not a teacher. He is Lord. Was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So we see he is the Son of God. We see he is our Lord. We see he rose from the dead, meaning he died to begin with. 1 Corinthians 15 and the third verse. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So he died not just for, you know, spreading what the Jews termed heresy or being a threat to Rome. He died for our sins. And where did we get this concept from? Did people make it up? No, it's what the scriptures have been saying all along. So that's why I said, according to the scriptures. And the book of Romans said that the gospel had been foretold by the prophets. So it just didn't come from nowhere. It just didn't come from thin air, rather. And he rose again the third day according to scriptures. So why did Christ die for our sins? That's the gospel message. So there is a substitution here. And if there is a substitution, like we were saying in the last episode, you died for your sin. 
not in yourself in Christ. So the dead you is the you God had a dispute with. The dead you is the you that was in rebellion to God. Where is that you? Completely dead. Completely dead. That's why Paul could say, I have wronged no man. I have wronged no man. The same Paul that went around in Acts 8 from house to house, hauling Christians out. The same Paul who in Acts 7 helped people that were stoning Stephen to hold their garment. That same Paul said he has hurt no one. He has offended no one. He has harmed no one. Why could he make such a statement? I strongly believe it's in 2 Corinthians 7, 3. Let me fact check myself on that. Sorry, 2 Corinthians 7, 2. Why could he utter such a statement? Because Paul, the persecutor, Paul, the church ravager, is dead. In the sight of God, that guy doesn't exist anymore. The Paul that exists in the sight of God is Paul, the apostle. So there's a reason it's called being born again because there is literally another birth. A man that believes in the gospel is literally reborn. Says all things have become new. Old things, that which was from the beginning in the original Greek, Achaia, those things are passed away. All of Adam's baggage from the beginning is gone everything becomes new so is the christian message about love definitely it's about love who, who, who told you it's not about love but it's about god's love for you <laughs> the love of god in christ is what the christian message is about you can never divorce Christ from the Christian message. He's central to it. The Christian message is about faith, yes, but it's about faith towards God in Christ. You can never divorce Christ from the Christian message. The Christian message is about peace. That's correct. But the message is about peace with God through Christ. You can never divorce Christ from the Christian message. So what separates the gospel? What separates Christianity from every other worldview on the planet? The answer, Christ. And I'm talking about the biblical and historical Christ. Not the Christ that has been drafted into a multiplicity of religions based on no solid historical evidence. not the Christ that culture appropriates to endorse its decadence. The gospel is the one message on the planet with a concept of a savior. A savior who saves by dying. The 
the gospel is the one message that tells you of God's love in Christ for you by virtue of which you can call God not just God but daddy Abba as it says in the Bible Abba as the most infinite form of father daddy daddy it's in the gospel you get that kind of intimacy with God it's in the gospel where you get a personal God that the that the, the same God who runs the entire universe cares intimately and specifically about you it says all the hairs on your head are numbered there are people I love so much in my own life but I have no idea how many hairs are on their head it's in the gospel you find a God who loves you that much and by faith in the gospel you have peace with God through that gospel thank you very much and see you in the next episode.